And then uh, from Daisy one day ago, I gave up on trying to help most spinal stenosis patients because they A, refuse to lose weight and B, refuse to do the PT and exercises and C, refuse to get off their butts and move. I will make exceptions for people that come to me, but I no longer go to them. 99% of people I ever met did nothing to fix the issue and just want a magic fix. And then she goes on to talk about um, uh, people being overweight and doing nothing, et cetera. Well, I take it from this, uh, Daisy, that you are a physical therapist or a trainer. You didn't say, but I'm, I'm assuming you have some kind of therapeutic background and you're frustrated with your spinal stenosis patients because they won't just get up and walk. And uh, the reason you're frustrated is because you notice that when people do just get up and walk, they feel better. And uh, motion is lotion, we often say with joints. That actually applies to spinal stenosis as well. But there's something, uh, Daisy, that you really need to consider, and that is severity. When you start out with spinal stenosis, spinal narrowing, it, uh, it is very, very painful, but you can actually do that motion is lotion thing. You can get up and walk, and uh, the walking seems to really, really help with the pain. How do we know? Because the reverse is often the way spinal stenosis presents itself. Very often, a person was active, and then something happened that made them inactive. They broke their leg. Uh, one that I saw a lot of in my practice days was actually heart attack. I had a heart attack. I was in the hospital. I haven't walked in three weeks. I used to walk every day. I never had a problem. Now my back is killing me and the pain shoots down my legs whenever I move. So they were keeping it at bay by staying active. But the reverse, that, that no longer applies. Remember, spinal stenosis is a progressive condition that never gets better. Even though you were active and it was feeling better, on the inside, if I would have done an MRI on you before the walk and then after you became active, after the walk, no matter how many days you walk, you still have spinal stenosis. If you believe otherwise, show me the evidence of that because I've seen 20,000 of these, literally 20,000 patients in the course of my career and never saw one where stenosis improved on MRI. It just doesn't, it, it only gets worse. So it may feel a little better, it may wax and wane. That's like saying, I can't see the moon so it doesn't exist. No, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, I can't see the moon, but there's still a moon. It's just that I can't see it at the moment because the light angle is, the light reflecting off the sun isn't hitting me in a way that I can visualize it. But the moon is still there, people. It's the same thing with spinal stenosis. You may have gone for a walk and you feel better, but you still have spinal stenosis. And then as it progresses, you're gonna reach a point where you really can't just walk it off. In fact, you can't walk. This is uh, something in medicine that really is worth pointing out because it leads to a lot of wrong thinking and misinformation, and it's called selection bias. So if everyone who walks it off gets better, we would tend to think that all you gotta do is walk it off to get better. If everyone who loses weight gets better, all you gotta do is lose weight to get better. But that walking in particular, it's the opposite. The people who can get better can walk it off. If you can't walk, by definition, you can't walk it off. So you can't walk it off to get better, right? I mean, you can't walk because of the disease. And why is that? Well, let's go back to the screen. I wanna, I wanna show you something that might, might really, really help kind of clarify some of this stuff. So this is a, um, this is a picture. Let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger for you. I actually would. Yeah, that's a little better. Um, not great, but a little better, but okay. So this is a picture and this person on the right is normal and this person on the left has spinal stenosis. And just for orientation, this is a spinous process. Remember those bumps you feel at the bottom of your back? And then if we go down the side of it, we get to the flat bone called the lamina. And then this is the inside of a facet joint. And then there's another bone called the pedicle. 
The pedicles, if you've heard of pedicle screws, that's where the screw goes in. And then we've got the disc. And so this is the bony canal, all of this, and then we have the same thing on the other side. Spinous process, lamina, facet joint, pedicle, disc. These are the boundaries of the spinal canal. Now in this image, this white is the empty space that's normally filled up with spinal fluid. So, and here of course is the spinal cord on the inside. So we've got the spinal cord, and then I want you to think of the spinal canal as a room. And our room has got a floor, which is the disc, and it has a roof, which is the lamina bones, and it has walls, which are the pedicle and the facet joints. The pedicle and the facet joints. So um, one thing that you don't see here is there's also, remember, a tendon connects uh, um, connects a bone to a bone. Uh, a tendon connects a muscle to a bone, but a ligament connects bone to bone. And so there's a ligament which goes in right in here, and um, that's called the ligamentum flavum. And that ligament is not shown here, but the ligamentum flavum gets thicker with movement, and the joint gets enlarges as you age. I mean, uh, think about it, people, right? Look back to me for a second. These are not the knuckles that I had as a child. They're much bigger. Joints enlarge with age and multiple uh, cycles of force. And the facet joints in the lumbar spine, remember this guy facing, facing you, the facet joints are joints. And as they bend, bending forward, nice to meet you, bending backward, get away, getting forward, get away. nice to meet you, get away, nice to meet you. You know, millions of times over the course of your life, the facet joints do just what the knuckle joints do, and they get bigger, and as they get bigger, what happens? The walls move in. So let's go look at the image again. Now, here's what happened. The facet joints enlarged, and so remember this empty space over here? It's not here anymore. The walls have moved in. And then they're not showing the ligamentum flavum, but the roof, the ligamentum flavum is along the roof and the roof is coming down. So if your walls move in and your roof comes down, guess what? Walls move in, roofs come down. Your room is smaller. And now this thing is trapped. The spinal canal is more narrow and you are, your nerves, in there in the lumbar spine or your spinal cord up in the thoracic and cervical spines is smushed. It's smushed in there, and that's the technical term. And so it's narrowed. And uh, it's not just the spinal canal. The Not shown in these diagrams are the foramina, which are the holes where the nerve roots come out. Well, your passageways, your holes where those roots come out, they're getting smushed too. Bone spurs are forming in there. And so you can even get nerve root pain from spinal stenosis. But classically, you, you get something called claudication. Claudication is pain down the legs when walking. Pain down the legs when walking. And you know someone's having claudication in the grocery store because they lean over the shopping cart. When you lean forward, it, open, it distracts those walls and opens that roof and creates more space in the spinal canal. It literally creates more space. Here's our guy laying on his tummy, and when he leans forward, see how it opens that canal up when he goes forward? When he goes back, it smushes it down. So you're in the grocery store, and you have spinal stenosis, and you start getting pain shooting down your legs and you bend forward and lean on that grocery cart and it opens it up and you can literally walk. Well, what if you're not in the grocery store? Well, it, classic spinal stenosis is you're out on a walk in the park and uh, you feel that pain shooting down your legs. You bend over, you sit on a bench and bring your knees to your chest, just like leaning over that grocery cart. You wanna bend that spinal canal open and that more room after four or five minutes allows that spinal fluid to circulate and bring oxygen to those nerve roots and they recover and you feel better and you can walk some more until it happens again. 
when this starts, it might happen to you after 30 minutes of walking or 40 minutes of walking or an hour of walking. And uh, in fact, in my own personal life, I remember my grandfather at one time told me, I walk for an hour every morning. When I get to 45 minutes, I start having pain down my legs. And I told him, why don't you try walking 40 minutes? And he said, great. He was about 80 when that happened. He died at 95. He walked 40 minutes a day, every day in between, and he was fine. So, I mean, it's it just depends on your stenosis. It depends on how narrow you are. If it's progressing fast and the narrowing is getting worse and the pinching is getting worse and the spinal fluid, then the amount that you can walk starts to be less. So it was 40 minutes, now it's 30 minutes, now it's 20 minutes, now it's 10 minutes, now it's five minutes. Eventually, all you do is stand up and the pain starts shooting down the legs. By the time you are that narrow, by the time you are so narrow that you have stationary neurogenic claudication, meaning you just stand up and the pain goes down the legs, you probably smushed your nerves so much that the nerves, it's not just the nerves that go to the legs, the nerves that go to your bowel and your bladder and that control sexual function are also in there. Whether you're male or female, the stuff that goes on requires those nerves. And if they're smushed, you start to lose that functionality. So don't you find it weird when your doctor is always asking you, you're having any trouble with bowel or bladder control or sexual function? They're looking for those symptoms of those nerves being smushed. That's a really, really, uh, really common thing to have happen. And the reason you want to look for those symptoms is, hey, that's time to start thinking about surgery. So Daisy wants everybody to get up and walk, but what I'm telling you is there's some people who cannot walk because of the disease. It's not a matter of they play too many video games or they're lazy or they're fat or they're whatever. The problem is they have spinal stenosis and this is what it naturally does. As a matter of fact, spinal stenosis is a serious business. We, we tend, because it happens slowly, we tend to like the frogs in the pot of boiling water, we tend to think that it's not a, an emergency. And it's not an emergency minute to minute, but eventually it's a huge problem. Uh, the natural history of spinal stenosis, because stenosis only gets worse at some rate, hopefully that rate is really slow, but if it's not and you're getting worse and worse and worse and worse, eventually you are bed bound, incontinent of urine, have no erectile dysfunction for men or no vaginal sensation for women, and you cannot walk, you cannot get out of bed, and you will get a urinary tract infection and you will die because you cannot manage your own life. Spinal stenosis is a fatal disease. It's, it's no different than cancer, it's just really slow. And so at some point, that narrowing reaches a time where it has to be addressed. So I find this attitude, oh, well, hey, if you just weren't so lazy, you'd be okay. Um, uh, it's not true. It's a little judgy, right? I mean, calling people fat and lazy and uh, video games, there's a lot of stereotyping going on there. And, um, you know, judge not lest you be judged. Uh, hmm? Who said that? It's an important message. Judge not lest you be judged. It's uh, it, People are often doing their best, and it's important to, to help everyone achieve the best that the best function that they can reach. It's really important to get this spinal stenosis addressed. And the way you evaluate it, as per our earlier conversation, is by having an MRI. Could you have a CT, AKA Alex? Yeah, you could, but um, it doesn't show it very well because we want to see that fluid. So yeah, sp uh, CT does show, but um, MRI shows better. So you have an MRI, and unless you can't, then you have a CT and uh, show, it'll show us what we need to see with your spinal canal. How do you know with uh, spinal stenosis whether or not you should have an MRI? It's that point at which you can't walk it off, certainly if you start having any bowel or bladder symptoms. And bladder symptoms aren't just, I peed and I didn't know I had to pee. They're, um, I can't pee, I go to pee and nothing comes out. Or I peed and then 10 minutes later I have to pee again. That's called neurogenic bladder, where your bladder is so large because it's never emptying all the way. And so it just fills up a little bit, but instead of going from here to here, it's going from here to here. So you'd hardly drink anything or you're more frequent. 
And of course, there are bladder issues and nerve issues. You know, it's not necessarily your spine, but it often is. And so you check that with an MRI. And then, uh, so you know to have, if you have bowel or bladder symptoms, if you're having pain with walking that is, um, that is inhibiting your function, like, uh, if you, like my grandfather never had an MRI of his low back. He walked that 40 minutes, 45 minutes, he was totally fine and uh, no issues. So it, it, there was really no reason to do anything. He had all those other normal functions. Similarly with my patients, if you're doing well, you don't need an MRI. But if it's inhibiting you, um, you know, now it's at 20 minutes or five minutes or 10 minutes, or my legs feel heavy all the time, or I'm starting to feel like they're numb, or I'm not sure what's going on and I'm thinking about it, I'm nervous about it, I need to do something, MRI. Um, and we can look, okay, so let's say the MRI shows you have some stenosis. The radiologist will usually rate it from mild, moderate, severe, marked. Mild, none, you know, don't see a lot of those. Mild, moderate, severe, marked. Um, if they, let's say they rate it moderate. Well, so that's, you don't need surgery for that. But you want to be aware of these symptoms that we just talked about. Or if you hear somebody talking about this issue playing cards, you want to know, tell them what to look out for. Heaviness in the legs, difficulty walking longer periods of time, shortening the, the distance that you can walk, and certainly, for goodness sakes, the bowel and bladder control and sexual dysfunction. You want to think about those things. But then maybe you get an MRI a year later. And if that one's okay, maybe you wait two years or five years. You know, that's called radiographic surveillance. Radiographic surveillance. Once you know something's going on, you put it under surveillance. You know how the cops, they sit there and watch the apartment until something happens, looking for the bad guys? That's surveillance. We're waiting for it to happen. Same thing. We're going to get an MRI in a year. And uh, in the meantime, if anything happens, we'll be aware of it. That's the way to safely manage those kind of situations. All right. Well, quite a bit of uh, information there about spinal stenosis. I hope that's helpful. It is a really common condition. Um, one thing I see very often is, you know, spinal stenosis is a surgical condition. Once it reaches, the Daisy, you can't walk them out of it. Uh, they, they can't stop playing video games and get better. Weight has nothing to do with it. When you're fat, like I've been most of my life, it has nothing to do with spinal stenosis. Unless you have a condition called epidural lipomatosis, you can actually get fat in the spinal canal. And if that happens, uh, and you lose weight, it actually does relieve the stenosis. But traditional stenosis that 99.99% of the people have that you can see on an MRI is due to the thickening of the ligament and the walls moving in of the joints enlarging, and that's not gonna get any better if you lose weight. So, um, you know, that's, that's not the issue.